Let's talk wrestling. <laughs> it's Wednesday damn, night. You damn, know damn, what damn. that means. We had another AEW Dynamite one that we were really, really waiting for just to kind of see what the hell the news was going to be. This is, I'm just saying, that guy over there, we just practiced this and I still fucked it up. Yeah. I'm ranging motions. We're Top Rope Tokes, here to review that show right down there, AEW Dynamite. Hey, that wasn't yeah. bad at first. There we go. <sighs> overall, yeah, yeah that. <laughs> overall, going into it, <laughs> I know we really didn't know what the hell to expect because everything that we got news-wise from last week. Um, yeah. I know when we get to that match, obviously you can go into a lot of the details about what the hell that world championship match means for the future yeah yeah we definitely need to talk about what that means because i don't know <laughs> i'm so, so i have uh, i have a couple ideas but i just uh, i don't know man i don't know i have one idea but we're still so close to the pay-per-view that we you know we kind of have to have an answer soon mm -hmm. um outside of that because we knew that was going to be a big thing that we were kind of waiting to see how it all played out how did the rest of the cards stack up for you uh well we had like we had a few good matches on this one actually i like this card and I, I kind of thought it lived up to the hype of it. And you know what? It it kind of felt that like even the promos, like every promo served a point. Yeah. Even if it was a you know an obvious point that we knew was coming, like Christian Cage accepting Jungle Boy's challenge, like we yeah. knew it was coming. But it's still, let's put it this way: it was better than the normal weekly Mox promo, which is usually a lot of rambling that doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, everything had a point See, purpose. Yeah, it feels like it, 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 everything is going somewhere. Yeah, because we're or everything in, did. Yeah, because we're kind of used to between things like that, and then like the Malachi House of Black slash Miro promos, which kind of like you're waiting for it to go somewhere. Everything accomplished something, as opposed to questions. I mean, even seeing Thunder Rosa crying backstage. Huge implications out of that one. And an announcement I'm very excited for. You seem pretty excited for. We're going to have a woman's four-way at All Out. We'll get to the details when we get to the details. <laughs> But after, you know, at first seemingly having an all out card that was only going to feature, well, at this rate, one woman's match, which was seemingly going to be Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm, because, right. I mean, you had to kind of feel maybe Jade Athena at some point, but. Yeah, Jade Athena is going to be on the card eventually. But that's the weird thing. We hear from Jade on Friday, so yeah. I kind of think that it's going to be confirmed Friday. Yeah, I'm like, like obviously they've been circling each other, but they really haven't kicked it up into gear yet. Oh, I take that back. She did smack her with a sledgehammer on Friday. Yep. See, it's time. Which gave to an amazing picture of Stokely with a sledgehammer <laughs> that became our last thumbnail. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was beautiful. But before we hop Don't. into the actual review of the show and go over details, I want to take a moment. You made it this far. I mean, granted, it's only been a few minutes at this point. If you're enjoying it, you want to talk more wrestling with us, do us a favor down below on YouTube. Drop a like, subscribe, comment, talk wrestling with us. That's great, too. But also, one more thing. Link in the description for a Discord. Come talk wrestling with us all the time. All the wrestling, not just AEW. You can have fun in there. Also, the ability to talk in wrestling gifts is amazing. Yeah. Part of that's because I will literally yeah. just put scissor me daddy ass half the time. 
can confirm. I get a whole lot of scissor bees. Oh God. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll circle back to that one not too far away. Um, yeah. It's important. Because we start off the show with Jericho getting to have his face-to-face -face conversation <laughs> with Daniel Garcia. There is a lot to unpack in this segment. Yeah. Um, if you'd yeah. like, I can kind of speed through up until Danielson gets involved. If you'd like to, go ahead. Uh, basically, Jericho comes out at first. He ends up, you know, talking up Garcia for a moment, but wel uh, welcomes him out to the ring to work out their issues. Garcia comes out. Did I say he invited Danielson or Garcia? Uh, I think he said Danielson. Okay. I was like, I know I said both recently, but it was Garcia. Garcia comes out noticeably conflicted. As soon as he gets in the ring, music cuts off. Big ass, you're a wrestler chant. Jericho says he just wants an apology for Garcia for putting his hands on him last week when I mean, he didn't at all acknowledge attacking Danielson, just the fact that Garcia put his hands on him. Uh, Garcia actually responds saying he's no Jericho knows how special that moment was for him, hanging 30 minutes with his hero. Uh, he didn't care at that moment if he was a wrestler or an entertainer. Jericho ruined his handshake moment. Jericho says he'll have lots more moments because he's the world's greatest sports technical <clears throat> He's a technical sports entertainer. Sorry. <laughs> I got to those words. I was like, I cannot say it and say it. So sports entertainer. Um, but Jericho wants Garcia to say it. Starts yelling at him, but the fans start chanting, "You're a wrestler!" And eventually, Dan uh, Brian Danielson interrupts. There we go. Are you done, dying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel better now. So that's when Brian Danielson comes on out. Mm -hmm. Anything yeah, that's right, everybody drink that water. <laughs> anything specific before that that kind of feels like I'm missing or anything that you need to point out? Um, before that, not really, no. Um, I liked Garcia here a lot. He was showing his, uh, his promo ability here. Mm -hmm. He had fire. He had passion and fire. Yeah, and he really played up the conflicted aspect really, yeah. really well. It, it did show really well on table TV because a lot of times subtlety doesn't come across great in theater, TV, etc. But no, he, he right. did it really, right. yeah, really it well. Worked. From the moment he came out to to the moment he left, you could feel just how torn he was. Oh, because when Samuelson got it. down to the ring, he looked like a kid stuck between two parents. Like, which one do I listen to? Which one do I go with? <laughs> he literally yeah. stood, like, in the middle yeah. with his heads down. Like, Yeah, he's like, Dad, Dad, I wish you wouldn't fight. Nah. <laughs> Danielson just yeah, basically Danielson. says he respects the wrestling match emphasis on wrestling obviously last week and he talks about Jericho bullying him a little bit but he could be anything he wants to be but he personally agrees with the fans that Daniel Garcia is a wrestler yeah Daniel Garcia is a wrestler I agree <laughs> but um but yeah he's just kind of stuck between the two of them um Jericho starts yelling at him again to say it some yeah, more. Jericho's, Garcia, you know, Jericho's adamant that he has to say it. Mm -hmm. um, Garcia finally stands up for himself and tells Jericho to leave him alone. He's out there be stuck between his hero and his mentor. And Jericho's trying to go make this decision right then and there in front of all these people. He's like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. He goes to turn and walk out of the ring. Jericho grabs him like around their shoulder, goes to turn him back around. Garcia shoves him down, instantly shows like regret, but at the same time, Brian Danielson is dying with laughter at this. Yeah, Jericho's sitting there on the floor with the <gasps> You touched me, look. I've fallen and I can't get up. Yeah. 
No, I just when they show yeah, Gar- Danielson cracking up, like he did the full like hunched over, like deep belly laugh kind of thing, just right in Jericho's face. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, that's what's supposed to happen to Jericho. Yeah. Yeah, as we said earlier, Garcia walked away conflicted. Once again, he'll be in the B- BCC real soon. But first, he'll probably get involved, maybe not in the match directly, but after the match. Once yes. we get to the pay per view, because after that, you get that nice out. little back and forth between Danielson and Jericho. But, yep. Yeah. Yeah, they had their little back and forth. It wasn't anything too special, surprisingly. I mean, nothing really special. I will say that the whole lines where he's like, what about your hero, Sue Hart? Who would he think the better tech, the better wrestler is? And then he actually says Owen Hart's name, too. Same question. He's like, oh, shit. Okay. I mean, it wasn't like great lines or amazing lines, but like in a really good promo, they would probably be lost. An average promo, I'm like, at least it kind of stung a little. But yeah, that's going to happen at All Out. Then we had Jake Hager attack Danielson from behind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and Danielson said he wanted to have a match tonight with Jericho. Jericho was like, nah. Nah, at All Out. Yeah, he started to Watch your back, bro. Right. Yep. <laughs> And then his dog comes in. And they'll have a match next week now, which mm-hmm. is okay. So, so Hager Danielson on next Dynamite, and then Jericho Danielson at All Out. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I have to say, like, Hager between MMA, he is a legitimate wrestler. He should have all the tools to be able to put on some kind of good match with Danielson. He should. We'll see. Also, doesn't hurt that like nobody gives a fuck about Hager. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I don't. <laughs> and he's it, he's around too it's infrequently, just, yeah. and he doesn't talk. Yeah. Now I will say it was funny when he first showed up. There, the whole running gag was the fact that he would never talk. Like they would go and hand the mic to him. And he went talk so like it was at least fun at first, but now it's like yeah, just nobody's gonna care about you. But next, next we got the first really good match of the night. We we got FTR Bald versus Jay Lethal Bald. <laughs> uh... Yeah, that match did not disappoint. Because those bald heads were shining all over the ring. Uh, the only thing that stood out more than that probably was fucking Dax's chest early on. Man, those chops. The Like, just the chops that both of them got. You know, Do- obviously Dax has great chops, but if I forget that Jay Lethal has, you know, been with Ric Flair quite a bit. So obviously he he's got to have some choice. I'm going to say he's got to have some chops, too. God damn, both of these dudes' chests were red as fuck. You know what? That is actually going to be... That exchange there is my hit of the night. (laughs) Man. Yeah, both of their chests look like... Dax's chest was as red as me if I was to be as sunburnt as I possibly could be before I yeah. blister. And Jay Lethal, he's not dark skinned, but he's 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 still a brown guy. Bruises and reds like don't show up that well on us, but oh, you could tell he was fucked up. <laughs> I kind of had for for that same reason like from a from a distance early like later on in the night when we saw the Lucha Bros I had a yeah. look at Penta's arm and I was like is he really really fucking tan right now 
or is that all his ink or a combination of the two because certain parts of his arms look like he got real real dark i can't tell really but then you get closer and you see all the tattoos and you're just trying to figure out which parts is because at a distance and those details it's hard to tell in between so i was like they get himself they go spend some time on the beach probably did and i bet you bet you it was fun yeah but this one ooh, like i don't have a whole i mean there's some specific notes in here like i had you know to start the match off they had a great wrestling exchange to start off the match later on in the match there was a point where it was figure four countered into a sharpshooter countered into another figure four attempt countered into another sharpshooter attempt so it wasn't even like a break in it all they were just counter 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 all the time which actually was how the match ended where bunch of counters and reverses mm -hmm. one day there was like even the <laughs> like even both of them trying to get off their finishers when Jay Lethal had uh, or tried to get off the lethal interjection, it gets countered. Dax goes into the slingshot power bomb, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that, that was, was a pretty close to the end. Now we talked about before we kind of figured Jay Lethal ending up getting the win, but they played this mm -hmm. out less decisively because it was Dax rolled him up with a Okada roll. Lethal grabbed the tights to roll them through some more to counter it and then grab the tights again to get the win. Oh yeah, Sanjay Duck. What about the headbutt, man? Oh yeah. Well, I was trying because we have so much tonight. Yeah, we so do. So I was trying to do the time. quick oh. the quick way. Okay. Sanjay Duck got a headbutt. Mm -hmm. He uh Dax had him him in the sharpshooter and he got because they weren't out there at first, but Dax had him in the sharpshooter, so he came out to interfere. So they did the whole spot where he got uh his own guy to run into mm -hmm. him on the apron, and that's what led into the Okada roll. No, no, there's a little bit more after, I think. There was a little more after, yeah. yeah. But eventually Lethal gets the win here. But, um but big announcement what you take. But the real reason Dutt was back out there is after Lethal got the win and they were walking up the ramp, they got on the mic, they started talking, they said, we're going to have a trios match. We agreed to a trios match. We never said what the trio was going to be. Jay Lethal's going to team with two people that he is really long time good friends with. He points to the screen and we get a Motor City Machine Guns package. <laughs> I'm just like a little kid. I was like, I met that guy. <laughs> and then you get the video package and they're just in there going, hold on, sorry, with the inversion, I gotta do this right for the camera. This taunt, or that symbol that they do. I'm like, yes, I might have to make a sign for the first time ever. <laughs> just a giant hand sign with another, just so we could hold up a hand and be like pointing at it. <laughs> like, hey, this is me. It's gonna be hype because for a while like they were the first one in a while that really felt like they were from around here that were actually doing something so and then it's right in their name so yeah yeah big fan yeah. big fan i'm about to be a fan i don't yeah. know nothing about him other than <laughs> the fact that he likes them a lot <laughs> Uh, you were there Ow. when I randomly ran into Alex Shelley, but you weren't into the wrestling at the time because it was so many, so many years ago and everything. And y'all were go doing your own thing. And I'm just sitting there like, uh, you, I know you so awkwardly, <laughs> but we went from that big news to more big news, more big news. <sighs> Thunder Rosa is backstage crying. She has to step down as AEW Women's Champion due to injury. I don't believe it was specified what the injury was. No, it's like the same punk stuff all over again. Yeah. But um, 
but it didn't but she didn't she did say something about an interim hmm. there's going to be an so, interim championship match at all out so the mm -hmm. same night that we get one interim championship resolved another one gets announced yep yep <laughs> but, after, but after i think it was on friday it might have been last week on dynamite but i think it was friday after Britt baker had a promo where she acknowledged she's not needed for the pay-per-view as soon as this news came out she's needed all right i started <laughs> and you were because you stream it you're saying like, i'm like we're we're getting Brit after all we're getting Brit after all let's go <laughs> and later not long after they throw up a graphic card so at all out it's going to be tony storm Britt baker the obvious two who are the other two range yeah hikaru shida <laughs> and jamie hater <laughs> you say it's still gonna be t it's weird you are green screening everything below your crotch to your knee i don't want you to see what's going on down there <laughs> so weird um, it's real nasty time down there <laughs> <laughs> so you were saying that you still think Tony Storm is going to win I was saying I hope yep. they course correct and put the belt back on a star but if it's if Tony is going to win I hope this is maybe when they finally pull the turn with like Jamie and Britt and start to break that up I think it can be so that way at least something major comes out of it but then yeah. again, it will be another thing this overshadowing the champion. <laughs> yeah. The answer is simple. Put it back yeah, on think... Because I would love to see the belt back on Brit, but I don't know. I think it's going to be Tony Stone. I'll just... I've, I've said I thought Tony Storm was going to win since Forbidden Door. And it hasn't happened yet. And it hasn't happened yet, but it's like one of those things that's like, it's not a matter of will it, it's when it, will it happen. Yeah. Just having this kind of situation kind of opens the door to kind of change course. I'm kind of, that's what I was just kind of hoping would be the thing. But after that, I got a question for you, Range. Who's your daddy? Uh, his name is Range Motion Senior. <laughs> because <laughs> next, we had a case of child abuse with Billy Gunn versus <laughs> Colton Gunn, which literally towards the end of this match was wrapped up because Aubrey even kind of had to be like, Billy, don't make me call the ch cops for child abuse. Because yeah. she actually had to kind of pull him away and kind of, it, it, they were kind of playing towards the heartstrings of him being the dad. Like, come on. Which allowed Stokely from ringside to smash Max Caster over the head with the boombox. Austin threw Bowens into the ring steps. And at the same time, while well, Aubrey was looking away at all the commotion, low blow and Colt 45 to Billy Gunn to lose to his own son. I know there's a few moments in there from early on with the entrance and everything that you want to hit, so have at it. Oh, um, actually, the entrance, I, I'm not too... Uh, the only line I, I took know. was, the ass boys are becoming a problem. He thinks young Billy should have used a condom. Oh, yeah, that was a good line. That was a good line. He dropped a political line that I thought was good, but we don't need to go into it. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't care. This was his, his like third Joe Biden line in, in the last few weeks. Yeah. Was it, he, he? They were gonna wipe him out like student did. Um, big Daddy ass chance to start the match. Yeah, yeah, Daddy ass getting that love from the crowd. I'm telling you, he's gonna be my dad. Okay. He did, um, randomly when they were rolling at the ramp, that he did go and scissor a fan. That sounds so terrible. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, sometimes you gotta scissor with your fans. <laughs> Any fans want to scissor, don't let me know, please. Ah, 
but you want to take what happened after the match? It got interesting. Yeah. It did. It did. Uh, the guns accept Stokely's business card. Finally. And they stomp out their dad. Stomp the shit out of him. Uh, this, this whole hating on your dad thing is getting... You guys got to stop hating on your dad. I, th I think it's going to be a handicap match in the pre-show for all out. <laughs> now that we have uh, the next part of this taking away the acclaim as Swerve in Our Glory comes out and saves they yeah, they uh make the guns and stokely run away they didn't actually have to do anything well no i just laughed because they announced that swerve and our glory was coming out the tag team champions were coming out to make the save you see swerve he's all the way out to the ring before you even see keith lee on the ramp yeah keith lee was just walking out real slow he wasn't gonna run out there out there looking mm -hmm. like a trucker <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Initially, after this, I thought this was going to be setting up uh, another three-way tag team title match. And I was like, "Come on, don't do that again." Oh, no. But didn't. I do take it back. There was one promo that didn't really serve a whole purpose besides hyping up the main event of the evening. Which, by the way, the main event was not the world championship match. It throwing that out there now it was the trios match of death triangle versus will osprey and aussie open the united empire um basically it was all the hype of the match osprey says he's glad to see pack the last time they had a match it went the last time i saw him they had a 30 minute draw osprey looks at the his partners goes ting 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 they're all champions they all have gold pack says they're gonna murder them AEW is death triangle territory there's other parts that was just the gist of it that i got <laughs> Yeah, that's that's uh, that was the best of it. And then definitely the best of it. Then Britt had a match, which was really just a purpose uh, to serve a purpose of let her have a promo and all the stuff that happened after. Because now Britt faces Kylan King. Mm -hmm. I have nothing about the beginning of this match. I only have the end, and I'm slowly stripping as we're having this. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, um, they went strike for strike in the beginning, which is kind of is still surprising to me because uh, Kylan King is massive compared to Brit. So it's always weird to see the, the much small, the much, the much smaller person, you know, just standing their ground. Especially when it's Brit, because she's not much of a I'm going to stand my ground and strike with you kind of person. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure when you said that about being surprising which way you're going to go with that first because of the fact that one clearly outshines the other. So I didn't know if you're going to be like squash or if it was going to the way that you went, which was, yeah, it was close to the squash. bigger person, little person. Every time this person hits the other, it should make a much bigger difference. Cause yeah, I walked back in and Britt hit the stomp and then threw on the lockjaw for the win. Yeah, yeah. Cause King only got she got her like couple of seconds of doing some stuff, but yeah, it was it was about as close to a squash match as you get without calling it a squash match. After you got Brick say, Britt saying it's a shame about Rosa, but Britt wrestled her entire reign with a broken wrist. I don't have any line that she said about Tony Randall. I just wrote down that she started talking about Tony until yeah, he came running. All I've had is that she called out Tony. Yeah. Uh, Tony comes out, but Jamie T Hater attacks her from behind. When I saw this, I figured you might enjoy it. The fact that they were in Cleveland and Rebel. Rebel, Rebel, Reba. I forget. At this point, yeah. because of Brit, I forgot which one's the right one. I believe the right one's Rebel, but she calls her Reba. Um, I think it's Rebel. 
Yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking about specifically her her social media stuff. It's Rebel. It's just she called her Reba. Um, she comes out with the big old, not like the little yeah, terrible she had, tower towel. Yeah, she, yeah, she had a nice big old terrible towel. She was a to show blanket. Cleveland. I want a terrible towel for a blanket. Yeah, she started like Brit just draped the blanket over top of her and let everything go down until Hikaru Shida came running out to make the save, which has set up a tag team match for down the line. Not the same night or anything, but um, was yeah. it Dynamite or was it, it was next Dynamite? It's Dynamite, yeah. Yeah, the obvious so, yeah, thing. Next, it's next Dynamite, yeah, nice. Nice tag team match to set up the four way match that'll be like five days later. Yeah. Plus, let's just appreciate the fact that we're going to see Hikaru Shida on TV for two weeks in a row. Yeah. It's been a long time since that's happened for the. F- we're going to see champion. Hikaru Shida on TV two weeks in a row, and then we're going to see her in person. <laughs> <laughs> we're going it all out. <laughs> I'm sorry to get more and more excited again. Uh, next, we had the Tony Schiavone backstage with uh, Swerve in Our Glory and the Acclaimed, which set up what we talked about earlier. Uh, they saved them because they're a ranked tag team and they think they're worthy of a title shot, so they challenged them to a match it all out. I kind of miss a lot of what the Acclaimed says, but I know Bowen says they're taking the belts because everyone loves the Acclaimed. Yeah. Have acclaimed shirts at All Out for the love of God, AEW, yeah. please. Because I forgot to ever order mine. My AEW. We need those acclaimed shirts. And I don't know if we can get them shipped in time. Because we're kind of close at this point. Yeah, not a chance. Yeah. So we got. Versus Punk was next. This was a squash match. Is that something you ever thought you were going to say? No. And of all the matches on this card, I did not think this was going to be a squash match. If you told me there was only one match on this card that was a squash match, this is the last one I would tell you was it. <laughs> Um, yeah, when that bell rang, it took like a, almost like two minutes before they ever touched each other because they just did like the stare down. But eventually, Mox just laid into him. It wasn't long before Punk went to hit some kind of like a spinning back kick kind of thing. No, it wasn't a back kick, it was a it was a it was a front kick because it went to the head, but it was a spin kick. I remember they called it and he went down instantly people are paying a lot of attention to see which one it was that kind of stuff but he really acted like you know he either stubbed the toe or rebroke his ankle foot hey you can't mess with those stubbed toes man no that's what i'm saying like he was down and he was screaming like it looked bad so yeah. if it was a sell job, good job because it was pretty good. Yeah, and then yeah, Marx takes advantage of it. He uh just starts beating the hell out of him. Mm-hmm. Gets a King Kong Larry, does a couple of the Death Riders, and he gets the pin for the win. Real yeah. fast. The camera show him like really really fall far out into the crowd like celebrating and punk is still like getting pulled out of the ring and he's at the bottom of the ramp and he's like looking back like it's some somber farewell while he's getting carried up the ramp <laughs> it's all over for sam punk get the fuck it's... out of here <laughs> yeah he got carried out he can't put any weight on his leg. Did seeing Punk come back too soon was the storyline there. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens with that later. Yeah. 
to Tony Schiavone backstage with Christian. We already kind of talked about this. This is where Christian eventually accepts this challenge for All Out. Anything different from the promo that you would like to point out? Christian's just... He just does the standard delusional heel of, mm -hmm. I did so many things for you, you should respect me. Yeah. It's a basically a continuation of their whole story, which is like, I yeah. can't believe you would say the, the things you said about me. I made the, hey, I'm things. your dad. <laughs> like, hey, I talked about your dead dad, and now I'm trying to call myself your dad. <laughs> mm -hmm. But he never did that from a place of malice like Jack did. He did it to motivate, and he's too stupid to know the difference. Yeah. So basically, yeah. a lot of the same promo he's been cutting. Mm -hmm. It all it sums up to him accepting the challenge, saying Jungle Boy can't do throw anything at him that he's never seen before because he's a professional and he's been in this business forever. He's also going to lose. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Christian might win. If we go back to kind of something that we Luchasaurus originally talked Fox about. Back. Yeah, because think about it. Luchasaurus has never physically got involved with either right. of them since. There was the scene backstage like kind of chasing where he like fights off security guards, but he has not laid a hand on either of them. And Luchasaurus yeah. just aligning with Christian wasn't going to be enough of a heel turn. But fucking up uh, Jungle Boy would be. Would do it. That would do it. Mm hmm? I said that would definitely do it. Yeah. Now, it doesn't really matter because we, we probably got the best promo of the night next. Well, by a singular person, anyways, because the opening one was pretty good in an overall uh, scope yeah, of things. Say overall, that was really. Good. But, but as a one person just talking into a mic, give me some Ricky Starks in his construction neon colored shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love this promo with Ricky Starks here, right? Man, he's just. Uh... Ricky too good, man. Ricky too good. But no, he just, he kind of just echoes more of what he's, he's been talking about the last few weeks. He's not doing so well. His team Taz broken up. He's he hurt lost the FT shot title. Yeah. QT in the factory are fucking with him. And then Hops, <laughs> his best friend, is turned out. Mm hmm. Start you know. off with he's hurt and he's pissed, and he did not mean hurt in a physical sense. He meant hurt because of all the shit that you were just talking about changing on him so fast, so much going on. Um, yeah. I did have one of his last lines on there that I thought was good, where he says, Hobbs is a like six different adjectives slimy snake and where he's from they cut the heads off snakes since he's from you know down by the bayou and new orleans okay um, you have to take the next part because i don't know it perfectly well and i know you know what i'm referring to <laughs> yeah yeah uh but yeah he, he brought up the fact that powerhouse hobbs loves to reference New Jack City a whole lot so he uh, stole one of Wesley Snipes lines from the movie and he told Powerhouse Hobbs to bring his five dollar ass to all out <laughs> mm -hmm. so again <laughs> one of those predictable ones we knew it was coming but it progressed the story but Ricky with his emotions so good like it really shows like they're taking their time but they're they're getting it right with a lot of these younger ones that they have to groom like they put enough time into ricky to kind of build to kind of pull the trigger at the same time same thing same thing with garcia because if you went back to blood and guts you 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 weren't saying a whole lot of nice things about garcia i'm not saying you didn't respect him 
but obviously at this point you're cl you're clamoring for things more than you were back when he was wearing a do rag with JAS. Yeah, he needs to not wear a do rag again. <laughs> and then we're cool. I had to, but. And then you're seeing it, with, so you're getting that switch with him. You saw a good time with Yuta. Like some of these young ones, that next generation, they're doing a good job of getting them over with the crowd. And that is really nice to see, considering all the shit that we've been hearing about backstage and trouble and all that other stuff recently. These guys want the spotlight. Mm hmm. He said he made sure that the spotlight was always big enough for both him and Hobbs. When he ate, Hobbs ate. Um, so I think before we talk about how after this we had a box backstage promo, which as much as he rambles already, we were talking about it. We don't know what the hell the story was that with that world title match. If he got injured. If that match ended a lot sooner than it should have, because it was like 9.20 and all we had left was the main event. So we had a random Mox backstage promo. Uh, the only thing I took from it was he said, if there's ever a problem in professional wrestling, the answer is John Moxley. Yeah. You just like, oh, people are surprised about how that went. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He starts doing like the my time thing at the very end too. Yeah. I'm like, how are you saying he's, this is your time? You've been champion before. He, yeah, he says, I am the guy in AEW. I am the guy. Okay. And now. You just wait until I start training. <laughs> the main event. <laughs> the match that had too much going on that you can't take notes for. All you can the do is sit back man. and enjoy. Now we talked about chops earlier in the in the night. And this is another thing going back to that promo that may have been unplanned right before this. This match started off really, really slow. Like Yeah. I'll spray yeah, down Because yeah, other than the Cause there was that like little flip session with Phoenix and Osprey in the beginning, just to kind of get get you into it. But then it was uh, slow after that for sure. Osprey got his shit caved in on his chest because he took like ten straight chops that were loud as fuck. Maybe not ten, but it was a lot in a row. Capped off with Penta doing one of his. And then, ooh, what a nice job. I was going to put that as my hardest <laughs> hit of the night. I was. But there's something else that happens in this match that took the cake. And if you remember my reaction to it when we were in chatting, watching it live, you know what it is. Oh, I think I know what it is. It is literally my next note because at one point, Pat hits a. Hold on, let me just put the graphic up right now, real quick first. Yeah, put that for that, yo. At one point, Peck and Will Ospreay are up on top of the battle. At first, I'm thinking maybe Peck's going to have an avalanche falcon arrow or just a superplex. And then it looked really, really funny when he started his superplex. And then it wasn't a superplex because he avalanche brain buster Will Ospreay on his fucking head in the middle of the ring. That is my hardest hit of the night. I sat up out of my bed like, the f what? Is he alive? <laughs> is he still alive? He was still alive. Spoiler alert. I mean, he didn't walk straight for the rest of the match. Yeah, yeah, he was pretty wobbly after that. <laughs> Playing up the that move was dope. The wear because it tear. was there was a lot. Dude, there was a whole lot in this match. If you like wrestling, like, go and watch it. Just go and watch it for the pack Osprey moments alone. Yeah, all these people can work. You know we like the Lucha Brothers. I know you love the Lucha Brothers. Although, let's get pissed off for one second because Osprey went after Penta's mask. 
during picture in picture. Yep. Somebody up there, like uh, every every time the Lucha Brothers are out there. Come on. Yeah. It looks like no matter who it is. Looks like Alex and, was getting annoyed too by so, it. Yeah. Um but I mean some of their moments where they're either trying to one up each other or they're wrestling with each other just oh my god. Just anything that we tell you in this review is not going to be enough. <laughs> Go and watch this match. Just do it. It is worth your it is worth a half hour of your time. Os Osprey hit an assisted Os cutter on Ray Fenix, who is being held up by Aussie Open for the win. Before we get into Ooh. the after the match things, is oh, there yeah. any other specific moment that you love during this match that you at least want to be able to point out? Because it was a lot of chaos. Not necessarily. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When Pac hit that, uh, so there was a couple things. Mm -hmm. Pac hits that uh, moon salt off the corner post and to the outside. So he like, to the backed outside. off the turnbuckle to the actual. Yeah, he backs off the turnbuckle onto the corner post and does a moon salt onto Osprey and whichever other guy of Aussie Open because I keep forgetting their names. Uh, uh, Fletcher uh, was the skinnier one. Davis was the thicker one. Okay. So to Davis, then. I just realized that even though I capped off how the match ended, I really didn't cap off how the match ended because it was right by after what you just mentioned. Yeah, they were over. I in know that that, that's why I was saying there's more than one thing that mm -hmm. I mentioned as well because uh, Pac after Pac gets that big spot right there with the moon slow, he sees Kip Sabian or I think this Kip Sabian here at ringside. He's been stalking Pac for weeks and weeks now. He wants that title and he shot. Wants that, he wants that all Atlantic title shot. Then, uh, so Pac is starting to get fed up, takes the box off his head. It's not Kip Sabian, though. It's just some kid with some behind the mask. David Bowie type <laughs> face paint on and his uh, <laughs> mouth duct tape shut. Although, wasn't yeah, it, his hands were completely free, so he could have freed himself at any time. Yep. Oh yeah, I just realized yeah, sure that. Yeah. yeah, but then while uh, Pack is distracted by that, Kip attacked him from behind, which is what gave him the numbers advantage to end up leading to the end of the match. Mm -hmm. That's what leads to the end. Oh yeah, that's right. That's another match that will end up getting that all out. Seems. I'm not sure about that one because it's such a short build and they're both still involved in the trios tournament at this point. So they won't have really much time, if any, to build that. I could see that being at... Well, Pac's not involved. Oh, I'm talking, talking about, about Pac and too? Kip Sabian. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, I was thinking about the after stuff. No. Oh. For whatever reason, as I was uh, about to switch to it. Oh, yeah. No, no, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. You can go straight to that, though. Um, no, because you did say that there was another spot that you wanted to mention for that one. For the no, match. that was that was okay. it. I just wanted to make sure that we mentioned that basically Kip Sabian was the reason why Will Aussie. Will Aussie. Will. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're going to be called. Will Aussie. <laughs> why um, Will Aussie wins. <laughs> So after the match, we got Young Bucks, Kenny coming out. We should mention Don Callis was on commentary for this match, scouting for their next match in the Trios tournament. So they're coming out to the ring at first. They're doing that whole thing where they walk partially down the ramp and they just have that like staring contest from a distance. But United, yeah, Empire, I, yeah, I want you. You want me. But you know that player was welcoming him into the ring. And Kenny was getting fired up. It took Don and everybody else to kind of be like, Kenny, no. Kenny, no. Yeah. So yeah, that's like, going to happen still. sometime soon. That's, uh, I think that's, that's got to be next week because that's the semifinal match. Oh, no. I, I mean, the one on one match is going to happen sometime soon. Oh. 
I wonder. Oh yeah, that that would because yeah, that'll have to happen because the wonder... whole Omega leaving New Japan in Osprey's hands type yeah. of thing. And then some of the condescending type remarks. Um, mm -hmm. But I wonder if that could possibly be the big New York show after the Grand Slam. That's usually not the Dynamite after, but I think the Dynamite after that. Mm -hmm. So maybe it will happen there. Maybe it will be the next pay-per-view. But at some point in the near future, maybe they find a way to delay it out and they end up going back to New Japan and doing Wrestle Kingdom. I don't know. And I also want to know how much of this story and how or, or how much is kenny omega not actually at 100 percent yeah um i watched bte even though it was super long it was like over a half hour this week but at some point and i was watching it in the replays that they played during the show um they're joking about him wrestling in a shirt and he's like i had to i'm wearing a girdle underneath this and then watching back in the clips, you can totally tell there's like something wrapped around them underneath the shirt and everything else too. Yeah. So I'm definitely thinking at least still somewhat hurt, but he might be hurt in like the rehab kind of hurt way. Okay. Like where everything's super sore and he's pushing himself and he's beat up that way. Maybe. Makes sense. I don't know. Because hell i mean he was still able to do a lot last week so if it's just a matter of kind of getting the reps in and getting fully used to everything i feel like even if he is never what he was before he's still going to be good if he's better than he was before because he's going to end up being healthier well obviously that's great too they kind of protected him in his match last week too Mm -hmm. Bucks did most of the work. I'm more curious about that match last week of how much of the way he acted, moved, and sold things, how much of that was done on purpose. Like when he acted rusty or kind of slightly off. Some of it I could see being on purpose because he would go from kind of looking like he doesn't have him to doing something really, really good to then kind of not kind of being off on something simple again. Yeah, um, I don't know. I guess this is his first match in almost a year. Mm -hmm. So it'll be and interesting. Not at 100%. Got to be some great rules. Yep, and it's just a matter of how, kind of like you were saying, how much of it is the storytelling and how much of it's real. But that's why it's always nice when you can find a way to blur the lines between the two unless unless it's cm punk mjf that kind of drama that we've had since double or nothing like please don't do too much of that kind of blurring reality uh, speaking of cm punk i still so what do you think is happening with cm punk now I don't know. I was hoping that us being a week out from last week, we would kind of know a little bit more to kind of feel a little bit more confident or whatever moving forward. Tonight did nothing, did nothing to make me feel better, confident that like there's a sense of direction here, anything. It just, it left, it left more questions. Yeah. It's not always a bad thing. Oh. If okay, cuz we mentioned it a few times. I I think we talked about it. I showed you some. Have you watched Have you watched the most recent episode of BT? I didn't watch this week's. No. So, they make a reference to CM Punk's promo and what Hangman was do or doing during the promo. And that segment's actually really funny with the Dark Order. The guy, like, he's going, at, he, like, they're all hyped up in the locker room, and this guy comes in, and he goes to interrupt him. He's like, hey, man, CM Punk's in there. And he's like, get the fuck out of here. We're doing important shit. Because he was trying to get them hyped up for their trios match and work it out and stuff like that. 
Yeah. So he's all focused on that, and so that was what they put in there as like this is why he didn't answer. This is why he didn't answer. It's cool. Although I'm pretty sure John Silver <laughs> tweeted a picture of him just sitting in the back eating catering with him as the real answer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So now that we have more confirmed yeah. matches, how are you feeling about all out? Feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty damn good. It's gonna be pretty nice. Um, we've got. Uh, well, I took them down. We got Swerve and Art Glory versus Acclaim. We've got the women's four way match. We've got Jungle Boy versus Christian. Jericho versus Danielson. Casino Pops. ladder match. Pops and Starks. FTR Wardlow versus Jay Lethal and the Machine Guns. Whatever the trio's yeah. finals is. Mm -hmm. It looks like we'll probably have Pack and Kip Sabian. Possibly Athena and Jade. Mm -hmm. My thing is, is we we know in terms of quality of wrestling and stuff like that, we know All Out's going to be good. I just still have the question, and it only is amplified because of the last two Dynamites. What's going to be the big story coming out of it? That kind of deal? Because we know the wrestling is going to be good, but you always have to have, a, they always have some kind of big story. I'm still banking on... Well, I was still banking on MJF at the end of a title match, but now I'm wondering, do they maybe do the casino ladder match at the beginning of the night and say whoever wins gets the main event shot at the end of the night? But that'd be adding another match to an already massive card. But you have to have a world title match on the show, right? Vegas pay-per-view of the year? Well, that or double or nothing, depending on how you want to look at it. Like, how do you not have a world championship match? But at this point, how do you build to one? Yeah, the only way, only way you can have in a world title match. It's, it, I mean, it would still have to be Punk. Right, because even like if it was Punk in some kind of way, then MJF makes sense to come back and get one really, really quick kind of thing. Yeah. But... Mox but, and him don't really have yeah, history. With, yeah, when it's Mox, it can't. It has to be punk. And because anyone See? else that Mox consistently has had history with recently, all's occupied. Like, you could say Jericho again. I don't want it. But he's also yeah. occupied. Not it. Yeah, not it. I mean, and Jer yeah, say Jericho's occupied too. But. Yeah, that wouldn't be a rematch to have it all out. Kenny Omega currently occupied. Kenny Omega ended Moxley's first title ring. <laughs> so like there, between Kenny Omega just coming back and Mox, just talking name value, not in terms of what makes sense, because obviously Kenny is not, as far as we know, good to go for a match like that. Just saying that would be one of those kind of names that if he was good to go, you could do that on a short term with those two. Outside of that, I got nothing. Now as a WWE former person wants to jump on over and fight his former best friend. Like it would have to be some kind of crazy shit. That's not happening. I'm so confused. I would go. Uh... Yeah, my only the, the only thing that I can think of is Somehow Punk is going to do something extra, something else extra heelish. I'll be like, hey, I'm good now. I want my shot again. He's going to come back with a special like D'Lo Brown type chest plate, but for his shoe. And be like, yeah, my foot's broken. I have to have this you know, extra thing in here. He's going to knock his ass out with a kick. And then MJF's going to show up. Uh, I don't know. We have so many questions, but if you're watching this and you have answers or potential answers, drop them in the comments. We would love to hear it or join Discord and let's talk about it there.